What are liquidated damages in real estate and how do they affect you as the seller? That's our topic. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Kim Ward. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I am a real estate broker and an expert with helping executors, administrators, and trustees with homes in probate or trust. You may never have heard of liquidated damages. So what are liquidated damages in real estate and how do they affect you as the seller? A liquidated damages provision in a California real estate purchase agreement provides for a buyer to owe a certain amount of money to the seller in the case where they do not complete a transaction. But there are some rules that I'll be sharing with you about how liquidated damages truly work. For example, if your buyer has placed $5,000 as an earnest money deposit into escrow and the liquidated damages clause is initialed by both the buyer and you, the seller, and then your buyer breaches the contract, you as the seller may be entitled to that $5,000 earnest money deposit as liquidated damages here in California. But a liquidated damages provision does not automatically entitle you, the seller, to that buyer's deposit in the case where the transaction doesn't close. One very important thing is the buyer must have removed all of their contingencies. And I have another video on this channel all about contingencies. You may wanna watch that next. And they need to remove those contingencies in writing. We have a California Association of Realtors document specifically for removing those contingencies. And of course, the buyer's agent needs to submit that document to your seller's agent, and then your seller's agent would have the ability to go after that deposit as a liquidated damages. Before we continue, I'd like to ask if you are enjoying my videos, and if you find them of value, to please subscribe to this channel, hit that like button, and go ahead and comment below. If you hit the bell button, you'll be notified of my upcoming videos every week, and you wouldn't wanna miss any of them. So to continue on with what are liquidated damages in a real estate provision, this only determines that the amount that the seller could recover. And of course, again, it's only if your buyer should breach the contract. A buyer may fail to close a real estate transaction for a variety of reasons. It could be that you don't come to terms on a request for repair. It could be that the appraisal doesn't come in at the purchase price or in most cases, it's because the buyer's loan has fallen through for some reason. Because one of the contingencies that the buyer will have in place is that they are able to obtain a loan to purchase the home. To recover these liquidated damages, a seller must be able to prove that the buyer did breach the contract. This may be as simple as your agent being able to speak to the buyer's agent and letting them know that their buyer did breach the contract and so the seller is going to go after getting that liquidated damages. And it may be as difficult as going to arbitration and then to mediation in order to obtain the earnest money deposit or a portion of it for liquidated damages. A few years back, I was helping a seller to sell a condo and it turned out that the buyer's husband, well, one of the buyers, the husband in this case, he passed away. And although those buyers had removed all their contingencies, my seller was kind enough to let the widow out of the contract and did not ask for me to obtain any liquidated damages for her. Sometimes the contract will be written that the buyer is to make more than one earnest money deposit. For instance, if we open escrow and the buyer puts down, let's say $5,000, sometimes they'll say, we're also gonna put down another $5,000 once we get past our inspection. In that case, it's really important that the contract reads that both of those deposits, the first 5,000 and the second 5,000, would both be considered part of the liquidated damages provision. Otherwise, the seller would not be entitled to the second $5,000. I rarely have a buyer's deposit be split into two different deposits like that. But on occasion, there's a reason why and we have to do it that way. And one thing that's truly important for you to know is that I always counter the buyer sending in their earnest money deposit either by a wire or delivering a cashier's check 
to escrow, usually within 24 hours of acceptance of the contract. The reason I do that is so that the money is there. If, as the California Purchase Agreement allows, the buyer can send a personal check to escrow. But we all know that personal checks can take up to 10 days to clear. And what I want is to know that that money is there at escrow and it's good for their earnest money deposit. And we don't have to wait that 10 day period in order to know that the buyer's earnest money deposit is good. If the real property that's being sold, that dwelling, if it does not contain more than four units and the buyer does intend to occupy one of those units at the time that the purchase agreement is made, then as I said before, each of those payments need to be part of the liquidated damages clause for you, the seller. It's as simple as initialing in the right space and signing. And the last thing that you need to know, if the total deposit is more than 3% of the purchase price, you, the seller, could be limited to 3% of the purchase price as liquidated damages. For instance, if the sales price is $800,000 and the buyer has stated they would put an earnest money deposit down of say $50,000, if your buyer should then default on the contract, in most cases, the most that you as the seller could use for liquidated damages is $24,000 of their $50,000 deposit or 3% of the agreed upon purchase price. In the 20 years that I have been helping to sell homes, I've only had three instances where the buyer actually did default. And when they didn't perform in those particular cases, I did retain the earnest money deposit for my seller by just speaking with the buyer's agent. Of course, both the buyer and the seller had to sign documentation. The buyer had to release in writing that earnest money deposit for the seller as the liquidated damages. This made the blow a little bit easier on my seller client. And of course, we then moved on to the next buyer. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and comment down below. I'd love to hear any stories that you have in regards to earnest money deposit or liquidated damages or anything else having to do with a probate or a trust administration. See you next week.